spoke the other day on the podcast about my kind of um what would you say me trying to play devil's advocate in the case of juicy smollett and basically saying what if he's telling the truth and i don't mean it like i believed him i meant it more so he's been you know from whatever evidence we have available at the moment it kind of seems more likely than not he was probably chatting shit about the whole attack right the whole hate crime attack it's most likely that he was lying but for whatever reason despite the mounting evidence despite his career being complete tatters, because you have to remember, he's an actor, he's an entertainer. He's basically been sitting on the sidelines for two years. I'm sure COVID hasn't helped things, but essentially he's kind of excommunicated himself or made himself kind of persona non grata by maintaining this lie this entire time. He's not actually, he's not relented at all. He just, even in the hopes of trying to rescue his career, and he's been adamant that this attack happened. So I was thinking to myself, you know what? Maybe in his head, he genuinely believes that it did happen where he said it happened because he didn't know it was those two Nigerian brothers that attacked him. He generally assumed that it was the MAGA supporters. But obviously, as the case has now concluded and the guilty verdict was read out, I, was just, I didn't mention at the start, Joseph Smollett has been found guilty, I think, of five of the six charges. So basically, what's been shown here is that the jury has seen, with the evidence provided to them, that more likely than not, he did um, plan or the whole attack was a hoax. Well, no, they basically concluded the attack was a hoax, not that he planned it. Yes, if you tax the host, you have to plan it. But whatever, you get what I mean, right? And I'm still left here scratching my head as to why he decided to do such a thing. No, don't give me why. Why is not good why is not a good point to come at this? I get the why. Most of us wouldn't because we're not narcissists and we're not, you know, maybe um self interested psychopaths, whatever it may be. But I guess if you're an entertainer, if you're an actor of some sort, you've gone to drama school, you've grown up an incredibly privileged, you know, uh, black kid in Chicago, wherever he grew up in, in, in the States, right? Obviously, he has these roots in the South or whatever. I think some family in the South, but for the most part, he grew up in a very kind of affluent family, he went to boarding school or private school, sorry. Um, you know, I, I'm assuming he had the access to all the best people in terms of getting his career in the, you know, acting and entertainment world. Um, his family friends with Kim Fox, do you know what I mean? So there's a lot of kind of political sway, a lot of influence, a lot of prestige, blah, 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 associated with his name. So I could understand in some way, shape or form doing the thing that he did in terms of lying because he probably hasn't said, he probably hasn't heard a no in his life many times. There probably hasn't been a door that he hasn't been able to open via himself or through other people that he might have known. So I can understand the need to kind of add a few more kind of uh, prestige points to his name or to his image by kind of, you know, saying he was the victim or he, was, he survived a, a pretty brazen hate crime, right? In the middle of Chicago. I get it. But the thing I never understood was that once it was obviously shown that more likely than not it was a hoax and most people believe that you probably did lie. And the fact that, again, just in terms of self-interest, forget all the lying stuff, just say in terms of self-interest, you've basically been on the sidelines for two and a half years. He hasn't been able to do award shows, no radio, no radio interviews, no press, um, no media like on TV or whatever it may be. Um, obviously knows acting nothing for the last two and a half years he's been on the sidelines and someone like him even if he's got money what gets what makes him get up in the morning isn't the fact that he's making money it's the fact that he's been able to get the adoration of fans who like his singing who like his acting so for that not to be happening and for basically you to, for doing it to yourself because i think if you would have just said hey i fess up to it hold my hands up people would have been probably more likely to move on given his background given his race given his sexuality i'm sure he would have been given a bit of a bligh but he just didn't do that. He refused to do that. There was no real inkling from his camp whatsoever that he was ever going to come out and say, okay, hold my hands up. I lied. Right? Let's move on. I just don't get it. I really don't. But I think someone said, or I saw someone on social media say something along the lines of, um, what did they say? Uh, oh, yeah. That someone made a point I saw on social media. Like, maybe he's actually, maybe he's a narcissist to the level where he's actually enjoying this attention. Even though this outcome isn't desirable, most likely he's going to appeal. I think that's what um, his lawyer did say in the press conference after. Um, obviously, Justice Smollett, met, Justice Smollett, Justice Smollett, Justice Smollett made no comment. You know, just rushed straight to his car. There's a video I'm going to play later of his mom, who's elderly, being assisted by two other ladies. You know, slowly and surely walking out the courtroom, thinking to himself like, "Guy, man, you're putting your elderly mum through this." She, again, 
not, not to disparage the lady, but if you're having to book like that, you're probably not in great health, right? The pressure time that she has available, you probably, she probably shouldn't be holding her into the flipping courthouse to, you know, sit through a trial and go through all that extrusion and detail. Your family probably don't need to do that either, considering the, where we are in the world right now. They probably need to be focusing on other things. It's all just revolved around him. He is the center of the of of the of everything that's going on in his family. Maybe that's how it's always been, even when he was growing up. Maybe he's always been the center of attention. He's always been kind of the theater kid, the one trying to get everyone's attention, performing in a living room sort of thing, right? Um wanting all the attention in that regard. So maybe that is a that is kind of a common theme and they don't see anything wrong with it. But I thought that was a little bit icky. But yeah, man, we should we see no relent no, nothing from him relenting from the story, no backtracking, no nothing. He's still adamant that it happened. He's still adamant that the police didn't do their job properly. And he's still adamant that he's going to come out of this somehow smelling like roses. Because even if he does become successful in the appeal and he gets some of the charges dropped, or he's no he's, he's found not guilty of some of the charges, the core public opinion has already spoken, especially at this point. You've gone through an entire, you know, public trial, <clears throat> public ordeal, to try and whatever. The first one got thrown out by the courts because of the favours that he has in the political circuit and the influence and whatnot, right? Dismissed. Um, then he got out in front of the camera again. When the charges got dismissed the first time around, he went in front of the camera and gave a speech. Now that he's been found guilty, he had nothing to say to the cameras, zero. He let his uh, representation and talk for him. Um, and now he's planning to do an appeal. It's just like, the worst type of person, isn't it? There really is the worst type of person. But let's continue. This article quickly says it says here, uh, Smollett actor found guilty of lying about the hoax. Um, or it says here, da, 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 bear with me if I zoom in here. Yeah. At a trial this week, Smollett 39 stood by denials um, that he staged a hoax attack against him. Prosecutors countered that by said he lied for hours on the stand as he repeated that he told what he told the Chicago police. He was found guilty on Thursday of five counts of disorderly contact. Each count carries a penalty of up to three years in prison. Given Smollett's lack of previous convictions, uh, experts have said a lighter sentence or probation is likely. A sentencing date is yet to be scheduled. So um, I heard that a lot being repeated by the prosecution, that they were really pissed off that he just kept lying. I guess in some respects, they just assumed because the, it had gone so far and because the evidence was so damning that he probably did hoax it, he was going to suddenly kind of you know put his hands up and say, nah. I would assume that because, I, like I said before in the previous podcast, I'm a person who maybe I might lie about something or I might lie about a story or I might lie about an event or I might lie about detail about my, about my life. But there comes a point where if someone keeps asking me questions about it. I'm just not going to be bothered to try and keep up the lie. And I'm going to be like, you know what? I was chatting shit. My bad. I lied about that. Right? Like when kind of pushed in the corner or when, not, when kind of pushed to explain more um, or to give more details, I'm going to be like, you know what? I, I'm not really, I don't really care that much. So I, I'm going to admit it now. I lied. It was just me or something else. But I think some people don't have that in them. Some people, well, the more you start pushing them and probing them and pressing them on the questions, they start, if anything, they start kind of doubling down in their lie or maybe questioning your sanity or accusing you of whatever, homophobia, racism, whatever, just to kind of deflect away from the point that, you know, they're lying, that kind of, so maybe he's one of those people. The jury of six men and six women reached a decision one day after the deliberations began, so it didn't take long for them to come to a conclusion. The trial stemmed from an incident nearly three years ago in January 2019 when a former Empire television star told police he was a victim of a hate crime. Smollett, who is black and gay, told police that he was set up on by the assailants who uh, shouted slurs, yelled at Trump slogans, dumped um, chemical substances on him and tied a noose around his neck while he was walking late at night in Chicago. You know what's interesting? I thought about this too, right? This might be one of the most damning parts of the Trump leg no, the Trump presidency, in some respects. Because I still do think most countries or most nations, you you do end up getting the political you do end up getting the political leadership you deserve. Whether it's through um, you know, uh, ambivalence to politics, uh, disenfranchised youth, um, whatever it may be, right? You earn, I do think you honestly do get leaders that you deserve. So I have no doubt in my mind that Trump was the perfect person to lead that country at that time to either bring them together or splinter them more than they needed to be splintered because they're already heading that way anyway. But one of the other things I think about his presidency that is really long lasting has been all the kind of, um, has been all the kind of, uh, what do you call them? Has been, has been everyone on, the, on his outside of his orbit who's been who's been kind of, negatively affected or positively affected by his presidency right some people made entire careers off him like alec baldwin for instance basically came back into the public conversation because of his crappy impersonations of trump on snl and obviously now he's going through what he's going through 
Um, then you've got obviously the rioters at the Capitol Hill building, right? Some of those guys are going to prison. I think there's a lady going to prison, I think in January. Um, you know, most of their lives have been fucking ruined by that whole entire es- a- episode. Then of course you have Justice Smollett, who basically, you know, off the back of the Trump presidency, tried to stoke the fires again of, you know, uh, red hatred and whatnot going on and try to kind of, you know, use that to lean into, to kind of use, to kind of propel his career. People have really, people really lost their minds over Trump being president. And I really don't get it. I understand he was a, he wasn't the most, um, what do you call it? He didn't inspire a lot of confidence when it comes to great leadership in that regard, right? I guess it depends how you look at it. But in terms of what you expect a president to kind of act like and be like, right? You don't expect a president to just only represent one half of the population, right? Even if they, you know, that's how basically most people vote. It's usually a split near on 50-50. Okay, cool. But still, you need to unite the country once you do come into power, right? It's all about poking holes and insulting and maybe denigrating the other side but once you then get into the white house your job is to kind of let's bring everyone together and let's try and have some common ground so we can work together for a better future for our family children blah 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 he did none of that and again don't get me wrong i understand why he didn't because if if we're being honest he also wasn't given any room to try and be a good guy he immediately was painted as a devil as basically hitler reincarnated right like he never was given a chance to kind of try to redeem himself or to try and be a good person um i also think they, they did this thing where they didn't i don't know if this is a fair again speaking from the outside in i feel like americans didn't really or some of the people in the media mostly they didn't really even try and appeal to his to his kind of better nature where i think he kind of just he's one of those people that loves compliments so if, if he would have done something that was kind of um, to the benefit of people on the left, they should have just kind of praised him for it over overtly so that he knew that good behavior would be somehow rewarded outwardly by people that openly mocked him beforehand. So he could just kind of get more of it. And they didn't do that. Everything he did was never good enough. It was always wrong. Um, there was always some ulterior motive, some sinister motive. And in the end, he just doubled down on the hatred. He doubled down on the dog whistling. He doubled down on appealing to his base. And again, like I said, it's affected people in a positive. But some people have made entire careers off of it. I'm pretty sure Tim Paul's YouTube career, it, it, it blossomed greatly during uh, Trump's presidency. Other people's YouTube careers completely stagnated. I think Dave Rubin can kind of been saying same sort of thing, right? His career kind of went a bit flatlined. Um, he got a bit too close to the sun when it comes to Trump. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just an interesting thing to analyze from afar. Justice Smollett essentially you know, fucked up his entire career because he hated Orange Man bad so much. It's like, in the end, he's the one coming out of it looking like an absolute donut, right? But let's um quickly go on this Twitter account from this guy who's been covering the entire thing, Matt Finn, who I've been obviously posting a lot on here on the show. Um, Please make sure you follow him. He's been doing some great journalistic work. I also love the fact that he hasn't been inserting his own opinions into it. He's just been stating the facts and kind of offering both sides of the argument and just basically allowing you to make your own decision as to what you think um, might have happened. Kind of reminds you what kind of journalism should be like, what media should be like, all those kind of things going forward. But, you know, okay, let's continue. Um, so you got a picture here, a video, sorry, of Smollett walking into his verdict. I love how all these images of Smollett walking around places. He's always kind of flanked by an army of black people. I'm assuming who are very influential people in Chicago. I, I think so. Maybe there's a couple of white guys here and there. But for the most part, it looks like a co. It looks like a um, a purposeful uh, thing to do to kind of have yourself flanked by all these strong powerful black people in your city um as a mark to show that you know i've got the right people alongside me so if they're alongside me for sure i'm telling the truth but it seems like all that has had no influence no one's really dug into who the people are around him i've not seen him on many shows like breakfast club and stuff you know talking about his innocence there's none been none of that it's just been there's kind of been a little bit of a it feels like in a black in a black community in the u.s it's kind of been like a it's kind of been like a little bit of a oh we're gonna pretend that's not happening we're gonna pretend that guy didn't just try and fool us didn't just try and weaponize our race as a way to kind of propel his career it feels that way in my opinion but again maybe i'm reading too much into it um smollett of course found guilty here it says on the on the tweet he said um um and again this is an interesting part of it when the verdict did get read out um he says yeah smollett was quiet stoic during the verdict according to my producer in a courtroom so he didn't move didn't say nothing um pretty much accepted it for what it was um, obviously maybe because he knew he was going to appeal anyway regardless so that might have been part of it maybe even they agreed maybe there was it was partly agreed in a way of like 
Because it wouldn't surprise me. He's that much of a narcissist that even if he was found only guilty of three of the six charges, he probably still would appeal the last three just so he can clear his name 100% sort of thing. Um, continue on. It says, Prosecutor Cook County needed a trial. Whether we won or lost, this needed to be aired out. Definitely agree with that one. Not going to make comments about Kim Foxy says here, yeah, similar charges, uh, but said what happened in the past speaks for itself. Oh, yeah, this is a thing. A prosecutor said at the end, which I thought was really telling as well, because um, I think were, uh, he was asked about what do you think made the jury convinced that this um, whole thing was most likely a hoax? And the prosecutor said the following. Two things stuck out. One, ridiculous to think that he left to buy eggs at 2 a.m. and end up in an intersection where the brothers were, said they were going to be. Um, obviously, which, which kind of shows that there was some sort of plan in place for them to meet at that intersection. And whatever he had said was the plan in terms of going to the gym, that wasn't detailed in the text messages. It was more so about being on the low and doing all this sort of stuff that he tried to say was Nigerian supplements or something. It's like, ay, ay, ay. And then two, he said um, a simple thing. He jimmied the rope to make the noose look closer to the neck. Picks show the differences. And I think we all said this before when the body cam footage got leaked or got released to the press that showed the police officer going up to just a small apartment or hotel, wherever he was staying in Chicago. And he was like sh kind of shaking and obviously, you know, um, reciting what happened in his head. And I think Lee Daniels or someone was also in a room and he still had a noose on his neck. And everyone was like, thinking like, why are you so I've got a noose on your neck? If you went through this horrible ordeal, why is a noose like placed on your neck like some sort of flipping chic scarf that like a Parisian hipster would be wearing? Why don't you just take it off? Um, and obviously, I think he said later on that a friend told him, I forgot, maybe it was Lee Daniels, whoever he called, had told him to put it back on so that they could see what happened. It was like, what? Like, yeah, this makes no sense. Whatever, you continue. Prosecutors not only did um, Smollett lie to the police, wreak havoc on the city, but he compounded a lie by lying to a jury. Um, again, which I think is unfair. It's, uh, it's unlikely he was going to come up in a courtroom and then suddenly say, I admit to my mistakes, I fucking lied. And it's not going to happen. If he didn't do it by now, he's not going to do it later on. Osandari brother's attorney said, Mrs. Smollett, you will still have my mother's child. So, uh, so Os Osandari brother's attorney said, Mrs. Smollett, you are still your mother's child. Humans will forgive. Come clean. Personally, I forgive you. Wow. Okay. Um, the other one, the other Osandaria says, I want to wish my brother good luck in his next fight in boxing and Nigerian, Afri Nigerian American lives matter. I don't know what that means. Um, all right, I'd stand by Smollett. Still has to exit the courtroom, requiring his basically to walk in front of the cameras. Of course, embarrassing. You got, of course, here a video of Smollett's elderly mother being escorted out of the courtroom by, I guess, two family relatives or two friends. Clearly looking, you know, I guess some, somewhat frail or just, you know, older lady, isn't it? It's just like, how would you put your mum through something like this, man? R imagine. And that's the thing is all that's been shameless about it too. It hasn't been the fact that he's just been able... It's one thing dealing with the consequences of your actions as a man on your own and standing up on it and being like, you know what? I messed up, man. I'm going to face this in court. I'm going to face the attorneys. I'm going to face... It. But whatever, you're going to stand up and own your thing. Don't then pull in your wife that's got nothing to do with this. Your, your, your brothers, your sisters, your whatever, not, not in his case, wife, but you know what I mean? Like, don't pull in other people around you to try and support you and prop you up. No, you got yourself into position in this mess. Now you sort it out yourself. Be a man and do it on your own. Stand on your two feet and, you know, go up there and whatever. But he's using all these people around him to make it seem as if, oh, if they're around me, then that means what I'm saying is true and it wasn't a lie, it wasn't a hoax. It's like, ugh, yeah. But again, he has to face people at home himself. So, you know, maybe they have an understanding. Um, Smollett's attorney says the following we respect the jury's process we are very disappointed respectfully disagree inconsistent I can't say lying about the same or something about the same story we feel confident about the appeal which is crazy to be honest um, unless they legitimately think they have a chance to get some of the charges dropped or unless they're able to prove that it was a prejudice trial to begin with the jury's mind was already made up because of all the media coverage from the last two years it was impossible to ignore things um, unless they can go, unless they can find some sort of loophole or some sort of administrative error that was made, but I doubt it too because again, the Chicago Police Department were embarrassed, right? They felt as if like they were used, um, they were they were kind of played, so they wanted to get back on him. So I'm sure they dotted all their eyes and crossed all their t's and made sure this case was watertight before it got brought um, to trial again. So it's very unlikely they're going to be able to find those loopholes, but I you know I guess if you're an attorney, you got to try. Um, it says it continues here. Uh, there's a video, obviously, of Smollett leaving a court home. No comment from him. Rushes straight into his car. Completely different from how it was the first time around when the charges got dropped. Just, you know, an incredible, incredible, incredible person, man. And again, a picture of him there. Finally, a sketch from him in the courthouse looking stoic, looking down, not really making any movement or anything going forward. But 
like I said, man, um, it's probably going to be a long road for him redemption wise. I'm not sure how you come back from this, lying to this regard, especially without any room to be honest and say, hey, I made a mistake, I messed up, and just kind of being able to move on that way. Um, it, the hubris in him is just shockingly bad. But again, like I said, I'm really curious. I'd love to sit down with a guy and just kind of find out why he kind of threw away a pretty decent, if not me, not average, but a pretty decent career. Don't get me wrong, he wasn't A-list. He was maybe C, B-list celebrity. But he had a pretty good um, role in that show he was doing. Was it, on M was it Empire? Right, that show, right? Um, he was obviously coming up a little bit. I remember seeing my breakfast interview, breakfast club interview of him. Um, he was obviously doing a singing thing, which wasn't the greatest, but he was trying in that regard. Um, he was actually trying to kind of, you know, be a little bit multidisciplinary in that regard. I'm sure he would have got other roles come up because, again, because of his race, because of his sexuality, um, because of just how he is, charismatic in front of the camera. His sister's obviously clearly a talented actress too, so there's clearly that kind of um, trait or talent in terms of being able to be um, good at acting, good at entertaining, just being an all-round creative. That definitely would have been something he'd be able to tap into. So why throw that away under the illusion that he could maybe grasp and jump onto um category b or category a kind of celebrity tier which he was never really going to get if you're that kind of person right you're if you if you're on those kind of shows that like power and stuff like you're never going to become leonardo dicaprio it's not going to happen you're on those shows because of the level of actor you are but you then also get to make a pretty decent career right you get to work consistently um you have a dedicated fan base that love everything that you do like it's not that bad of a life i don't see why you'd throw that away in the hope of trying to get that little in in hope of trying to see the in hope of the grass is always green on the other side, but you're not gonna get over the other side because it's a very small pool of people who are occupying on those kind of places. So it's like, I don't know, man. I don't. And in the, in the protest, he kind of turns off everybody that again he 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 loses fans, his own fans that love him, and he also turns off people that didn't really care about him in the first place. So it's like you lose lose in it. But you know what can you do? People lie, people lie.